Did you hear the bell? I did. I think it's time to start our class. My name is Miss Nicole. And my name is Miss Amanda. And we're going to be your teachers today. Welcome to our classroom. Today, we are going to be talking about The Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Are you ready to start? Let's begin. Whenever we read a new story, we should always look at the cover and ask ourselves some questions to see, to make our brains ready to receive new information. What do you see? Well, when I look at this cover, I see a big lion. I see a man made out of metal. Mm -hmm. I also see a scarecrow. I see a little girl, a little girl, and a little dog. And a little dog. Yeah. I can see that their feet are moving, so they're probably going somewhere. Mm-hmm. Do you think they're going on a journey, or are they going to the zoo? I think they're going on some kind of adventure. It looks like an adventure story, yeah. Let's see what happens next. Are you ready to tell us more about the story? Yes. The Wizard of Oz is an adventure story about a girl, Dorothy, and her dog, Toto. They are carried to the land of Oz by a tornado, and they must find their way back home. Along the way, they meet many interesting new friends, including a tin man, a scarecrow, and a lion. Together, they travel down the yellow brick road towards the Emerald Castle in search of the wizard. Excellent. What about the setting of this story? The setting is the time or place a story takes place. This story takes place on a journey. So it starts in Kansas, which is a state in America, and it ends back in Kansas, but along the way, they spend most of their time in the land of Oz. The land of Oz includes the Emerald City, the Yellow Brick Road, and many other places where they journey along the way. Right. The book was written in 1900, or published in 1900, and there is no mention of which time period the story takes place, but we can assume that it was in the same time period that it was written. Right. So we have the author, L. Frank Baum. He wanted to write a fairy tale to, for American children that they would enjoy and be able to understand easily. He really believed that children's books should not be so violent or romantic. He wanted just a... Nice. He wanted to teach children some moral lessons in ways that they would be entertained and feel that they were understanding what was being written. And he thought that romance was not something that children could understand at all. No. Since we know that he liked to write a book that was a fairy tale, we should probably talk about what a fairy tale is. Of course. What is a fairy tale? Well, a fairy tale is a folk tale that takes place in a magical land ruled by royalty, and the characters are either good or evil. A fairy tale is also a kind of fantasy, so it's a kind of story that could never take place in real life, and it usually includes magic. Ooh, magic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so here we have, the, um, we have the book. Written in 1900. In 1900, and then there was also a musical movie that was released in 1939. I love this movie. It's so much fun. <laughs> I love the book also, but together it's even a better combination. You should watch the book, watch the movie, and read the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're actually very similar. Uh, the stories are, there's only some very minor details that are different between the movie and the book, but one of the most meaningful differences mm -hmm. is that in the movie, her adventure is actually a dream in the end. Mm -hmm. But in the book, it turns out to be real. Yeah, this makes a huge difference. A lot of people have done a lot of study about this book. And some people say that the movie has completely changed the child's experience because the book was designed to make children think about their inner world next to their outer world, meaning that the things that they experience inside of them would be different than the things that they experience outside of them in, in the normal life. So, for example, if you felt very shy and uncomfortable inside, but you were brave anyways and you showed yourself to be very <laughs> confident, this would be a difference between the inner and outer worlds. Whereas in the movie, the movie is more showing a difference between the waking life and the sleeping life. It's not as much about your experience as a human being. Right. 
So well, there's another um, difference between the movie and the book, or actually it's a similarity. Um, <laughs> in the book, Dorothy's house is picked up by a tornado, and the same thing happens in, in the movie. They just call it something different. In the book, they call it a cyclone, mm -hmm. and in the movie, they call it a tornado. Right. A tornado is a powerful storm that happens very quickly, and so people must seek shelter immediately. It's a spinning cloud that touches the ground and destroys everything Oof. in its path. Okay. Are you ready to read? Yes, let's read. Let's read. We will read a shortened version of this story, so you should definitely go and read the book for yourself if you're interested in these characters and find more details. Dorothy lived in Kansas with Auntie M and her little dog, Toto. She daydreamed about an adventure. Oh no, a tornado. Dorothy and Toto must run quickly. They run and run, trying to get home safely. But a big storm threw their house up high, way up into the sky. When the house came down, Dorothy looked around and frowned. Underneath the house, two shoes were sticking out. And staring at Dorothy was a crowd of little people. They came and said, Welcome you to Munchkin Land. They continued, We are the Munchkins. That wicked witch was mean. Now that she is dead, will you be our queen? Dorothy replied, I can't stay, but I can't find my way. Can you show me which way to go? The Munchkins answered, no, but we wish we can. Maybe our friend the Good Witch can. Finally, she came and she said, Go to the Wizard of Oz in the Emerald City. Wear these magic silver shoes, but you need to be quick. There is no time to lose. Follow the yellow brick road. Follow the yellow brick road. Dorothy and Toto walked down the yellow brick road and soon they met a scarecrow. He said, my head is full of yellow straw. He complained, but what I really want is a brain. Dorothy said, we're going to see the Wizard of Oz. Maybe he can give you a brain. Dorothy, Toto, and the Scarecrow walked further down the yellow brick road until they met a tin man. He was rusted from the rain and needed oil to start moving again. He said, thank you, dear, but I cannot love. I lost the love of my life. She was my heart. Now I have no heart, said the Tin Man. I have no heart. She said, don't cry, sweet Tin Man. We're going to see the Wizard of Oz. Maybe he can give you a heart. So Dorothy and Toto, Scarecrow and the Tin Man, continued their journey down the yellow brick road. They became afraid when they reached the deep, dark forest. Suddenly, a lion tries to bite Toto, but Dorothy hits him on the nose and says, Don't you dare bite him! You are nothing but a big coward! He replies, I know it, but I can't help it. Everything I see and hear makes me shake and shiver with fear. I need courage, said Lion. Don't worry, dear Lion. You can come with us to see the Wizard of Oz, said Dorothy. Maybe he can give you some courage. So Dorothy and Toto, Scarecrow, Tin Man, and Cowardly Lion walked further down the yellow brick road. Together they walked and walked until suddenly the Tin Man began to cry. But he couldn't say why. The Scarecrow was quick thinking, knew exactly what to do. He shouts, I'll bring the oil can to you. After he was properly oiled again, the Tin Man said, I must learn to watch where I walk. When I cry, my jaw rusts and I can't talk. I stepped on a bug and killed it. I never meant to harm it. I don't like to hurt any living thing. And I must take care to never be cruel to anything. Suddenly, they came across a huge ditch and they could only get across it by jumping on Lion's back. I'm terribly afraid of falling myself, but I suppose there is nothing to do but to try it. Then one by one, Lion helped them all across. 
the new friends walked and walked until they came to the Emerald City. What a sight, they said. It is so pretty. It was the strangest place they had ever seen. Everything was bright and green and sparkling. A guard took Dorothy and her friends to go see the wizard. The wizard sat in a great big chair and asked them all why they were there. I want a brain, said the scarecrow. I want a heart, said the tin man. I want some courage, said the cowardly lion. And I just want to go home, said Dorothy. The wizard put new stuffing inside the scarecrow's head. You will feel better now that you have a brain, he said. And he put a red heart in the tin man's chest. It is a kind heart, he said. The very best. Then he gave the lion a special magic drink. This will give you courage, I think. Dorothy stood there quietly, feeling all alone. Oh, please, will you help me go home? Dorothy and the wizard were ready to go, but then Toto ran off and Dor Dorothy ran after Toto. The wizard couldn't stop for her, and he said, I really am a bad wizard. I am not a bad man, and I try the best that I can. The good witch comes to her rescue and reminds her of her beautiful shoes. Just do as I say, she said, and the magic shoes will take you away. Click your heels oh. three times and say where you want to go, she said. With a click, click, click and a whirl and a twirl through the air and over a rainbow until finally she was home, she said, there is no place like home and realized she had the power all along. I love this story. I know, it's such a great story. <laughs> there are so many themes in this story. So what do you think this book teaches about friendship? Well, I think it's all of the characters have their own strengths. Mm -hmm. And when they come together, they're really able to, to use them to make each other better. Yeah, and they learn from each other also. And if you had only one choice between courage and brain and being brave, courage, brain, and heart, which one would you choose? I would probably choose courage. Why? Well, because I feel like you, you need to have courage in order to, to try things in life. It's like if you don't have any courage, then you just won't ever try anything new. I would probably choose heart because I think no matter what you do, you have to do it with a good heart. But I think one of the best things about this story is that Dorothy really doesn't have to choose because all of her friends have all of these wonderful strengths. Right, and so she kind of learns from them, mm -hmm. and then now she has all of these, Very these good. strengths. Thank you so much for joining us. You did a great job. I hope you continue reading about Dorothy and her friends. And we'll see you um, next Friday. Bye. Bye. Bye.